an early season conference game between the Louisiana Raging Cajuns and the ODU Monarchs. Let's preview it with the ODU Monarchists on Locked on Sunbelt. You are Locked on Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, back with another edition of Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. We got Mike and Aaron from the ODU Monarchists hopping on here momentarily uh, to preview the Cajuns and ODU, a week two early season Sunbelt Conference ballgame. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for $20 off your first purchase. All right, so we recap a lot of what ODU did against Virginia Tech. We talk about Grant Wilson. We talk about this losing streak that they're on. Uh, what does ODU and Norfolk have to offer? Uh, I said city in, in uh, the uh, our discussion. It is uh, Norfolk is one of the largest metropolitan areas, if not the largest metropolitan area in the United States without a major league team. So I said city, but a, no major league team there. That was one of the things they were trying to get baseball there. Uh, but uh, you'll, it's a very interesting answer that you hear from Michael Langston. So let's get into it. Let's preview the uh, Louisiana Raging Cajuns and the ODU Monarchs with Mike and Aaron from ODU Monarchists. Dave Schultz back with another edition of Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day, getting ready for week two. We actually have a uh, conference ball game. The Louisiana Raging Cajuns heading out to Norfolk, Virginia to take on the Old Dominion Monarchs. Really honored to have we got uh, the uh, ODU Monarchists, Mike Langston and Aaron Zielinski on to join us. Uh, we'll start with you, Mike. A, thanks very much for coming on. And B, uh, tell us how misleading that score was last week. Uh, ODU falling short, what, 36-17 to Virginia Tech. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, yeah, that was very misleading. Um, it was a one-score game late in the third quarter. Uh, turnovers kind of caught up to Old Dominion, and uh, it got out of hand after that. How did uh, Aaron, how did uh, the new offense look? We got the Fordham offensive coordinator, the Fordham backup quarterback. Uh, they put up all kinds of yards and, and points last uh, year, right? We got to keep track with the, the Incarnate Word crew, right? Fordham was number one in yards, second in points. Uh, whereas uh, Texas State was number one in points and second in yards, or incarnate word was, G.J. Kinney now at Texas State. How did the offense look to you? So we kind of had a mixed bag. Uh, the running game looked like it could be explosive, and it looks like that there's a lot of potential there. All of the running backs that we have, and we got a number of them all look capable. They were all picking up good yardage. Um, but the passing game has got a little ways to go. I think – there's a lot of timing routes. A lot of things have to happen with that. And we had some missed opportunities. Obviously, we had like less than 100 yards passing. But I think if you talk to Mike a little bit more as we go, the running game is what's going to be key to this offense. And it appears that Old Dominion is going to be able to run the ball really well this year. Well, I'm going to ask you, Aaron, uh, your passing game was in, in Blacksburg, where the passing game was. Allie Jennings is, is tearing you guys up. That's where the passing game was. Well, you know, we all know that uh, number zero is a good player. Uh, he he did great as a monarch. Um, you know, he had an opportunity to go to Virginia Tech. He took it, um, and he played well. Uh, you know, our corners are relatively inexperienced, and I think they learned a lot. I think they'll grow from it. And, you know, Ali had a great game, but we'll be better for it. All right, Mike, let's get back to you. Let's let's back it up a little bit because, it's. I mean, it is a tough – Road to hoe, right? The uh, the uh, uh, Monarchs have not won a game since they hammered Coastal Carolina. They come into the season with a six-game losing streak. They have a road trip to Virginia Tech. They get the Cajuns to come in, and then they're hosting Wake Forest. Uh, I mean, no one wants to look at it that way, but uh, it's kind of like a nine-game losing streak staring ODU straight in the eyes. Uh, you know, we're now at seven. All right. Uh, you know, they are six and a half point favorites at home against the Cajuns, who defensively played pretty well, but a little bit shaky or inconsistent uh, offense. What was the outlook coming into the season, knowing how difficult that the schedule was, at least to begin with? Uh, I mean, I think most fans were just hoping to see progress with the offense. 
Uh, last year, our defense played well. Um, and the issues on defense were usually because they were on the field the whole game and kind of you're going to get tired. And you're going to struggle eventually in a game when you're always on the field. Um, every We were either scoring really quickly last year or we were going three and out. And that offense just didn't work. So everyone kind of wanted – we want a similar defense to what we had last year, but just to get the offense to just even mediocre, then this team can win games. Um, and so bringing in someone like Kevin Decker – it's exciting because his offense does work, and we saw it in game one. Uh, we need to pass block better, but the running game was working against a, a team that should be – well, people expect to be a good run defense usually. Virginia Tech is pretty strong against the against run. They always have a really strong D-line and front seven. And we, we, we averaged 4.7 yards per carry, hmm. and we had a quarterback who was willing to take off with the ball. Uh, Mick plays with his feet which is something we did not have last year in our RPO spread. Uh, but we have it this year. We also couldn't run the ball against anyone else other than Coastal last year. Well, yeah. <laughs> Coastal and, could not stop you guys. <laughs> and against Virginia Tech, it didn't matter what running back was in the game. They were gaining yards. Mm. The only issue we had was holding on to the ball. We had two, we had three fumbles, two lost. Um, two of those were on drives that we – Look like we were going to score. If you score those two. If you score two touchdowns there, it's a different ball game altogether. Um, so I think our whole thing was we just need to see an offense that works, and it'll make the defense better and make us a more competitive football program. So we want to just keep seeing this kind of progress. Uh, we know this new offense; it's going to take time for the passing game to click um, because it's a timing-based offense, and. They have to be on the same page, you know. It's going to take a little bit of time for that to click. And Grant Wilson's first start was in Lane Stadium at night. Not an easy place to play. Right, right. That's true. So, talking to Mike, yeah, we're talking yeah. to Mike Langston and Aaron Zelinsky. So I'll, I'll I'll give it to you, Aaron. Uh, Mike says if the offense can be mediocre, how would you grade the offense against Virginia Tech? And you can grade on a curve if you want to because it's Virginia Tech. You know, I mean, compared to last year, um, things are really kind of night and day. I, I would give us, you know, maybe a C or C minus um, yeah. if I'm grading us overall. Sure. Um, yeah, the, the running game looks like it's going to certainly be proficient there. And I, I expect to see the same thing this week against Louisiana. If the passing game can just, let's say, move forward 10 percent, get a little bit better. I mean that's going to open that up even more. So, I would say I would say a C or C minus this week. Well, that'll be interesting because the strengths right now in one game, and again it was Northwestern State, so that may not be very indicative of of how good the Cajuns are. But defensively, the defensive line was outstanding. They gave up a total of 187 yards. 47 of that was on the last play of the game against Northwestern State. So for 28 minutes of the second half, they gave up a total of 40 yards. They were out with one of their better players, Mason uh, Narcisse. Unfortunately, his father just passed away. And so he'll be back for this game against ODU. Uh, and Northwestern State couldn't do anything, at least offensively. It'll be interesting to see, you know, who wins that battle, right? Strength against strength, the ODU running game against the uh, the Raging Cajuns defensive line. Mike, your thoughts? Well, the new system is a boundary spread offense. So it's going to spread that defense. The secondary is not going to be in on running plays until you're past the five-yard mark. Uh, so I, I really like this run blocking we have. It's one of the, it's the one thing we heard preseason was we're really good run blocking, pass blocking needs to get better, and we did see that in the Virginia Tech game. Um, so you actually you actually got an honest assessment from your coaching staff during during camp. That's something new. That never happens. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I we saw that against Virginia Tech. The passing game can improve. They have the talent to improve, but running the ball, I, I think that won't be a problem this year. All right, let's take a timeout. When we come back, we'll talk more about ODU quarterback Grant Wilson. He has an aspect to his game that apparently the previous quarterback did not. 
Let me tell you a little bit about LinkedIn jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Let's get back at it with the ODU monarchists, Aaron and Mike, talking about ODU quarterback Grant Wilson and the new aspect that he he brings to the Monarchs offense. All right, Aaron, what did uh, when he says it's a, are you guys running like three, four? It's obviously more than three, but four or five wide because that's actually what the Cajuns used to do under Billy Napier, you know, and Mark Hudspeth for that fact of the matter. Spread everybody out and run the football. And, you know, when the Cajuns were rocking and rolling with a couple of NFL offensive linemen and, you know, almost NFL running backs uh, and one actually in the NFL, uh, you could yell out the play and it wouldn't matter. We're running left. See if you can stop Eli Mitchell. Nope, you can't. Trey Regis, you know, good luck. If you miss Raymond Kelly Jr., it's 80 yards later and you're looking at his, uh, you know, tailbone. Um, so is that is that what they're doing? They're spreading everybody out. So, I mean, if you make one guy miss, all of a sudden it's a big game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Mike and I were sitting together at the game and, you know, he was like Tony Romo has been in the past. He's kind of calling out. He knows what's going on here. Um, We are. I I don't know if it was every play. It wasn't every play, but most often we saw at least four receivers out there. Sometimes Mm -hmm. a tight end stacking guys, spreading people out. Um, So uh, like what Mike was talking about before. Louisiana is going to have to adjust to that and you got to kind of pick your, got to pick your poison. Um, I think Grant hit nine passes. I mean, if you have a, if you have a passing game, that's a little bit more efficient, it's just going to get way more to stop. I know one of the things that we were really bad at last year was time of possession. We got killed. Our defense was on the field all the time. And in this first game against Virginia tech, I mean, we had the ball for a little more than 26 minutes. They had it 33. So we are trending in a that's significant not, direction. Not right, yeah, no. that's not bad. Yeah. And and that's without that's without being able to convert many, you know, third, you know, passes and third down. That's that's just running the ball and kind of keeping the tempo that Kevin Decker and Ricky Ronnie want to do. So um I think there's a lot to be optimistic for if you're a Monarch fan. How did they do on third down? That was a bugaboo for uh, the Cajuns. The first, ha- the first half took two hours because the two teams were combined three for 20 on third down. It took forever to get going. How was, do you guys remember how, uh, how ODU was on third down? Was that an issue? Yeah, I think uh, we ended eight for 15, but That's in the first good. half, for yeah. some, I think we started eight for 12. So we started mm. off really hot, but then, you know, we had a couple of, a uh, couple turnovers and things kind of spiral at the end. So we were way better on third down than we were at really any point last year. That's outstanding. We're talking with uh, the ODU monarchists, Mike Langston and Aaron Zelinsky as we're previewing the raging Cajuns taking on ODU. Actually guys, this is the first time these two teams have ever played. I actually asked, uh, Mike Desimo, the head coach of the Raging Cajuns, is, does it matter? Is it, a, is it a thing? You guys, it's not only the players haven't been there, but the coaching staff hasn't been there. And he's like, well, it's basically a plane to a hotel, to a stadium, and maybe a movie theater. Uh, so no, not that big of a difference. Uh, but it is a new place to play stadium. I was supposed to be full. What's the weather like? I actually heard there was a, a little bit of a heat wave in uh, early September over there on the coast. What, what's the weather supposed to be like if uh, any Raging Cajun fans are are heading up to Norfolk. Uh, I, I think there's a chance of thunderstorms and rain right now. It oh. is. Uh, we had some fall like weather last week and it was beautiful. Uh, right. I played golf and it was just amazing weather to golf in, but uh, it's heated up a lot this week. It feels like right. summer again. Um, last year, last week was clearly a false fall. Um, 
So it's supposed to cool down with the rain this weekend, but Norfolk, we always have rain in the forecast, and oftentimes it doesn't actually show up. So who it's anyone's guess what's what the weather's gonna be like on Saturday, really. Right. Right. Would you rather I know the Cajuns would probably rather have it with humidity. Uh I don't know how much of an advantage that would be uh if they if it's been hot there all summer long. Yeah, I, I think if it rained, it would not be a bad thing for Old Dominion. Um, we held Virginia Tech to two and a half yards per carry hmm. last last Saturday. We ran for 4.7 yards per carry against Virginia Tech. If this became a game where both teams have to run because the weather stinks, I, I like our chances. Hmm. All right. Uh, we're talking again, it's locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. Where Aaron, where have you seen uh, the biggest improvement. You, you gave everybody a C, which based on a six-game slash seven-game losing streak, that's not all that bad. Uh, where did you see the most improvement from this year, from last year to this year? Well, our defense played well last year despite having to be on the field so much. And they did the same thing at Virginia Tech. I mean, they played a really good game until you know, towards the end when you know things were just kind of out of hand and – you know, we're putting some really bad positions. Um, I know we keep talking about it, but the, the the running game last year, we really had one guy, Blake Watson, who, you know, was uh, kind of our lead back who, you know, carried the ball, uh, carried, he was the workhorse. He was the one guy. Now we have a number of capable guys that can step in and, and do it. Um but if I had to pick one thing through one game, which is a super small sample size, despite not having great passing yards, it's Grant Wilson, who, you know, is a much better fit for the offense that we're trying to run. And it's clear that he understands it and he knows when, you know, when to tuck and run. Um, we didn't have that last year. Our, our quarterback um, wasn't comfortable running. There were very few times where he took off to do so, and, and we needed it. And this year we have that. Um, and not only is he willing to just do that, but he keeps his head up. He's scanning the field. He's looking for more yards while being smart, not taking an unnecessary hit. So is he running? Is he is he is he running part of the play? Are they running running plays for him? Ben Woldridge had a you know twenty four yard you know student body right sweep for a touchdown which again was not on my bingo card last Saturday. Uh, so, so is he running? Is that part of the offense or keeping his head up and, and tucking it? That sounds like, you know, if, if the pass is not there, he's, he's taken off and running. Well, I think it depends on what, you know, what they've got going on and what the correct read is. So okay. the offense, I think gives him, you know, puts him in a position where he's got to make that decision on what he's going to do. So running is very much part of the offense. It's just, you know, going to depend upon what is presented, and, you know, what happens throughout the play. But did you see what, what, did they run any QB draws? You know, did he bootleg? Was there running, was there any sp play that it looked like it was specifically for him? Give me well, the game plan, Aaron. Give me the game plan. <laughs> <laughs> we were five rows up, so it's really difficult for a short guy like me to be able to to, to see what's going on there. That Mike is the us. weakest excuse I've ever seen. <laughs> um, Mike is, is probably dumb. more better equipped to answer this question than I am. Uh, yeah, so I mean, you, you know, like like Jay, like Ben Woldridge, they ran one play for him. Jane Daniels for LSU, they ran a couple plays for him. I know the RPO, but that's kind of a decision. You know, if it's available, that's not really a running play for the quarterback. So there were a couple RPOs, um, and then the majority of them were scrambles. Okay. All right. To answer your question. There you go. See, it wasn't that hard, Aaron. You could have done that. You could have said that. Come on. Uh, all right. A couple. All right. One last time out. We'll come back and we'll talk about Norfolk as a city again. They were the largest metropolitan city not to have a major league team. And Mike actually has some good reasons for that and really believes that's why ODU can bring the community together. Let me tell you a little bit about game time. Buying tickets to your favorite event should not be stressful. Game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you'll have. What are some of the things you'll like about Game Time app experience? 
well, flash deals and last minute tickets, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area, images of the seat views and lowest price guarantee, cancellation protection and job loss protection uh, as well. It's the fastest growing ticket app in the country for a reason. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Dave Schultz, one more segment on Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. We wrap things up with the ODU monarchists, Mike and Aaron. We talk about the city of Norfolk and how ODU can bring it together. And we, of course, give our predictions. Stay tuned for that. It is Locked On Sunbelt with the ODU monarchists, Aaron and Mike. All right, a couple more questions uh, for the uh, uh, the ODU monarchists, uh, Mike Langston and Aaron Zielinski. All right, so back in the day, so we're talking... Oh, geez. Maybe when Scott Jackson and I were in Jacksonville, Florida, back around the 2000s, Norfolk was like the largest market in America without a major league city. Uh, what's happened since? I'm not sure because it's transient because if it's a Navy town that would work there. But, you know, how, has it grown? Has it what, what's happened to um, to Norfolk? Also, the brother, Dr. Seth Schultz, did his residency there, just to let you know. And I found out about my baby brother, Eric, in Virginia Beach. Virginia is for lovers, apparently so. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Virginia Beach is now the largest city in um, Virginia, I believe, mm. uh, population-wise. Um, it's still the biggest – I think it's still the biggest metro area without a major league franchise. Right. And I, I don't see that changing because one thing we have different than most – major areas is we have a a bunch of cities instead of just one major city right right uh and then half of those cities are split by um the bay so you got to drive through a tunnel to get through to, to hampton and newport news and williamsburg so uh, we're not just kind of like all put in this one small area we're spread out through a huge geographic region and I think that's part of the reason why I would never really work here. Um, our population is just spread too far. And between too many cities who have competing oh. interests, because Virginia Beach wants to do their thing, Norfolk wants to do their thing, Chesapeake wants to do their thing, oh. Portsmouth, Hampton, Newport News, they all want to do their own thing. They all want to be the city. So it's kind of hard to find an arena deal and attract a team because of that. So it wouldn't work in downtown Norfolk is what you're saying. I don't think so. I I think this is why Old Dominion is in the perfect spot to just become the region's ta uh, team. Right. And I'm completely fine with that. Well, they have uh, – it used to be the Mets. Is it still the Mets? It used to – is it yeah. the Norfolk Mets? It used to be the so Tidewater the, Tides, baby. The, tide, the, the Norfolk Tides are part of the Orioles system. Orioles, now. Okay. Um, they're very excited because they just got Jackson Holiday to town. Oh. So, uh, yeah, it's been a good summer for to be a Tides fan because they've had all of these great prospects for the Orioles come through town. And isn't there a AAA uh, AHL hockey team? Like Hampton Roads used to be like a powerhouse, or is that not so, there anymore? So they won the AHL Cup in like 2012. Oh. And the Calder Cup. And the next year they lost their – um, affiliation and they got bumped down to the ECHL. Oh, but we get more fights, so we're, we get we're happy. <laughs> it's amazing what fans actually want at minor league entertainment, but they're still there. Yeah, they're still here. All right, all right, it's prediction, uh, prediction times, boys. All right, uh, again, ODU, and we're talking locked on Sunbelt, your team every day with the ODU uh, monarchist Mike Langston, uh, and Aaron Zelinsky. Cajuns come in a six and a half point favorite. They're one and oh, 38 13 over Northwestern State. Uh, ODU comes in 0 and 1, 36 17 loss to uh, Virginia Tech. The ball game is in Norfolk. What do you got? Aaron, lead us well, off. All right. Well, 
I think the game, I don't know if it still is, but it was, uh, we were six and a half point dogs the last time we checked. Yep. Um, I think it's going to be a closer game than that. We're at home. Our guys are going to be fired up. I think that running game is going to click. The passing game is going to be a little bit better. And I'm looking at a three point win for Old Dominion. Okay. 24 21. Sounds about right. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking the over. I think it was at 48 oh. and a half. Oh. Uh, I'm I'm seeing like something like 35 28 Old Dominion. It's going to be a really good game. I don't really know what to make of Louis, uh, Louisiana yet. Um, they had a beat up old line last year. Their wide receivers made their passing game was not efficient last week. It was not. Um, if it's inefficient against us, they're going to have to run the ball successfully. And as I noted earlier, we are really good against the run. And we're we're also better at home. So I don't, we've been tested already. We played Virginia Tech. They played an yep. FCS. Yep. I feel like all the advantages that are non-football related are football related are in Old Dominion's favor. We're at home. We played someone tough already. They're on the road. Um, they're not used to the stadium. All of these things kind of fold into Old Dominion's favor. And in a matchup that's pretty close, you give it to the home team. So Old Dominion wins. So let me get this straight. For about 20 minutes here, we've been talking about how good each team defense is, and you took the over? Yeah. Aaron, uh, I ain't following that lead. Come on. <laughs> well, I mean – the, the the points that are out there aren't that high when you look at it. I mean, we well, saw forty eight and a half. Yeah, so maybe you're yeah. Right. So, maybe you're right. so you but know, he said, that... but he but he didn't do that. He went over sixty. He went thirty five twenty eight. Hey, he's seeing green shoots. I I think we've got uh, some good stuff here. And last week we had we had everything against us. We were on the road. We had a quarterback who had never taken a you know, a, a snap against, an, you know, FBS snap, let alone in Lane Stadium at right. night, you know, enter Sandman with 58 new players. So, and we went and those guys competed. And, you know, I've heard a lot of them talk in the last couple of days and they left that place with their head up. They're not, they're not down at all. Good they're very that. optimistic and they're fired up. We've got a lot of, a lot of guys that are from the area here too. So our receivers, you could say that they struggled a bit in this last game, but a lot of those guys are from, from Norfolk and they've got a lot of family and they, they got a lot to play for here. So I think that Saturday is going to be a good day for the Monarchs. All right. I'll go 24, 17. I'll say the Cajuns uh, cover, but in a defensive struggle. <laughs> uh, I, think he's I think that's a fair, I think that's a fair prediction, but I, Old Dominion is – I just need everyone to know Old Dominion is not Old Dominion of last year. A lot has okay. changed, and uh, new days are ahead for uh, for Old Dominion. Now, who's who's in charge of the hot sauce this weekend? I saw that was on the way. That'll well, I don't here. think it's going to show up. Yeah, I don't think it's going to show up in time. So we're going to have to depend upon our uh, – our buddy Gary to bring bring that heat. Oh well, that's too bad. He's. Mike I don't Lane think we got overnight it. shipping from Louisiana. Could have done two day shipping. Jeez, let's go raging with you, <laughs> Josh. Not hooking you up. He's Mike Langston. He's Aaron Zelinsky uh, from the ODO ODU Monarchists. You can follow them on the Twitterverse or X or whatever we're calling it these days. They do a great job covering the Monarchs. Really appreciate your time and enjoy the football. Hopefully, the rain will stay away and you'll have a nice evening for football. Thanks, guys. All right, thank, thank you. you. Go Monarchs.